in this video, I will be doing the comparison between BFS and DFS. We will compare the important characteristics of both the algorithms and we'll also see how we can decide which algorithm to choose for which kind of problems. If you have some doubts on how BFS or DFS works, please have a look on my graph playlist. I have made separate videos explaining both of these algorithms in detail. Now let's start the comparison between BFS and DFS. So BFS means breadth first search and DFS means depth first search. So let's say we are starting the traversal from A and we have to do a BFS traversal of this graph. So in BFS, we start the traversal from the root node and visit nodes in level by level manner. So if we start from A, we have to traverse all the nodes that are at equal distance from root node. So the equal distance nodes here are B, G and D. This is an unweighted graph. All are at one edge distance from the root node. So if we do the BFS traversal, so first we'll write A, then B, then D, then G. And in the next round, we will traverse all the nodes that are at distance 2. So the distance 2 nodes are E and F. So we can see this is 2 distance and this is also 2 distance. So we will write E and F. And at the end, the last node that is at distance 3. So this is the BFS traversal for this graph. And in DFS, we start the traversal from the root node and visit as far as we can until we meet a dead end. So if we take this graph and do a DFS traversal starting from A, we go towards B, then we go towards E, then G. Now we cannot go from G to A because A we have already visited. So we backtrack and from B we explore the next unexplored node. So we go towards F, from F we go towards C and from C we go towards D. So the DFS traversal will be A, B, E, G, F, C, D. So this is a short way of writing the BFS and DFS traversal. If you want to understand in detail how we will implement this and how the actual algorithm works, then you can have a look at the separate videos that I have done for BFS and DFS. I have explained the implementation and the algorithm in detail. So here we're just doing a comparison, so I'm not explaining the whole algorithm. Second difference that we have in BFS and DFS is for implementing BFS, we use Q and for implementing DFS, we use stack. So as you know, Q is a FIFO data structure. So FIFO, as we know that it is first in, first out. And LIFO is last in, first out. So as per the property of BFS, we have to explore the graph layer wise. So from A, we have to explore the nodes that are at same distance from A. So BGD, we have to explore first, then we have to explore the second layer. So this property is in alignment with the FIFO that whichever node we first insert in the queue, we have to pop it out. So first we'll insert BGD, then we'll pop B, G and D. So in this way, we will be able to do the BFS traversal. And similarly for DFS, we take a path and we keep going until we meet a dead end. And when we meet a dead end, we have to backtrack and then we have to reach the next unexplored node. So here also from A, we go towards B, from B to E, from E to G. So here we'll pop these two nodes to reach the next unexplored graph. So that is in alignment with the LIFO data structure, which is a stack. So we can also remember this as D is for depth or height, we can say, and stack is usually drawn as vertical. So we can say that DFS relates with stack. BFS is breadth. Breadth, when we talk about, we usually talk about something which is horizontal and horizontal is more alignment with Q. Also remember the word barbecue. B is BFS. And this is Q. So for BFS, we use Q. So this was a important characteristic that we have separate for BFS and DFS. So now let's see what is the next difference. So in BFS or DFS, we have to traverse all the nodes and all the edges only once. So the time complexity will be order of V plus E for both BFS and DFS. So when we write order of V plus E, we mean that order of max of V comma E. So in dense graph, the number of edges are quite greater than number of vertices. So max of V by E will be equal to order of E because E is more dominant in dense graph. So we saw here the time complexity is same for BFS and DFS. Now let's talk about space complexity. So the issue here is that the best case for BFS will be the worst case for DFS. 
and vice versa. So the best case for BFS will be when the node that we have to find is near the start node. So it is near the top. And the best case for DFS will be that the node that we have to find is located deep inside. So the worst case will be same for both, which would be equal to the number of vertices. So it will be order of V. If we consider large graphs which are used by Facebook or GPS navigation systems, so the graph size is quite enormous. So when the graph is infinite, we talk about space complexity in terms of B and D. So B is the branching factor, which is the average out degree and D is the distance from the start node. So the average out degree we mean is, let's say for E, the out degree is 2. For B, the out degree is 3. For A, the out degree is 3. For G, the out degree is 2. So if we take the average out degree of the graph, so that will be equal to B. So when we're talking about space complexity, for an infinite graph, we talk in terms of B and D. So the space complexity for BFS will be order of B raised to power D and for DFS it will be order of BD. So we can see that the space complexity for BFS is quite higher than DFS. It is because when we are doing a BFS traversal, let's say for this graph, we'll save memory for all the child nodes. So if the graph size is quite big, that this will be quite large memory that we will consume. But in case of DFS, because we traverse as deep as possible, so the memory utilization is comparatively low than BFS. The next characteristic that we have is optimal or not optimal. So what do we mean by optimal? So when we're talking about search algorithms, the optimal means when the traversal finds a solution, it has found the best solution. So when we're talking about best, we mean the shortest. We're talking about the unweighted graph. So unweighted graph because all edges have the same weight. So BFS will find a shortest path to that node because it will check the minimum number of edges because we are doing a traversal layer wise. BFS is sure to find a solution which will be optimal whenever it finds one. But if we talk about in terms of DFS, so DFS can find a solution which is not optimal. Now we have studied some important characteristics of these graph and we have seen the differences which are present in both the traversal. So now if we are given a problem, how will we decide which kind of traversal we have to choose? So that depends on the structure of the graph and the location and the number of searched for items. So let's see how does that affect our decision to choose which algorithm. So if we know that the solution is not far from the root of the tree, then we should go for BFS. So if we are given a graph like this and we know that solution would be present in one of a child that is at a distance let's say one or distance two from the root node, then it is advisable to go for BFS because BFS will do a layer wise search for all this. And in one layer, it will traverse all these children. So it will find the searched for node quite sooner than DFS. But if we know that the solutions are frequent, but they are located deep down inside the tree, then it is obvious that we should go for DFS because DFS will keep on traversing a path until it meets a dead end. So if it is located deep inside the tree, that means DFS is more likely to find it sooner than BFS. But if the tree is very deep and the solutions are rare, the DFS will take too much time because it will go deep down inside one path and then backtrack. So it will be more consuming when the solutions are very near and the depth of the graph is quite high. And if the tree is very wide, then BFS will take too much memory because BFS will save all the children nodes in the queue. And if the graph is, let's say, infinite for Facebook or some GPS navigation system, then it will be very impractical to store all those nodes in memory. So in that case, we have to go for DFS. Let's take an example. So this is a family tree. So we can see here, this is a grandfather, grandmother, and these are the subsequent children. So these are the youngest and these are the oldest. So if we are given a family tree in form of a graph, and we have to look for someone who is still alive, then which traversal would you choose? So when we're talking about someone who is still alive, then that means that person would be present somewhere deep down inside the tree. So he will be present either here or here. If this graph size is quite big, then it makes sense to go for the DFS traversal because it will be located in the deep down inside the tree. So if you're searching for a family member who died a very long time ago, so in this family tree, that member will be either present near the root node, so near here or in here, so nearer to the start node. So it makes more sense to go for the BFS traversal because BFS will traverse all the child nodes 
which are at a particular distance from the node start node at once so it makes more sense to go for the bfs traversal so let's see some more examples facebook linkedin friend suggestion so let's say you are a user a who is friends with user b and b is further in friends with c and d so generally you might have seen facebook or linkedin they give us suggestions that we should be friends with user c and d so they would be doing a bfs traversal until and let's say a distance 2 so for a we take nodes which are a distance 2 they will be c and d so the actual algorithm might be a bit different but the basic concept remains the same the different suggestions are based on bfs traversal so we have already seen when we're talking about shortest path we are looking for an algorithm that is optimal so optimal means that whenever a solution is found by the traversal it would be the best one so in terms of unweighted graph best one would be the shortest one so to find shortest path between two nodes we go for bfs traversal then the longest path between two nodes in a graph so usually dfs is preferred in this case because it can go deep down inside the tree and check for all the distances from a particular node so we'd go for a dfs traversal then solve maze or sudoku which have only one solution so here we try all the paths and when we meet a dead end we backtrack and try the other path so this is an ideal situation for a dfs traversal because in dfs also we go until a path and when we meet a dead end or already visited node we backtrack and try another path so for maze or for sudoku that have only one solution dfs is the most preferred algorithm in this case so let's see some more examples if we have to check for graph connectedness so means we have to check whether a particular node is reachable from other node so if we are given this graph and we have to check whether node is reachable from other node or not so in this case we can either go for bfs or dfs it does not matter because both can check for graph connectivity so you might have seen the earlier version of ms paint in which there was a flood fail algorithm that whenever you click on a pixel then it will color all the neighboring pixels in the same color it checks all the nodes that are connected with it and it does the same color on all of them so in this case also we can either opt for bfs or dfs next is detect cycle in a graph so to detect cycle in a graph usually we prefer dfs because here the concept of back edges comes so that will do a separate video but just to give an idea so back edges means that if in a recursion stack you reach a particular node let's say you are at a particular node a and that node is already present in the recursion stack of a so that means this graph has a cycle so back edges concept comes more for the dfs because here we are using a recursion stack but there are also ways to do this via bfs also so we can do either traversal detect cycle in a graph then is the topological sorting so topological sorting means that if there is an edge from a node u to node v then in the topological sort u would come before v so this is an ideal case for operating system for which let's say there are two resources r1 and r2 and there is a process p1 that is dependent on both these resources so whenever these resources are available only then p1 can be scheduled so you can say this is a typical scheduling problem for operating system in which it has to schedule multiple programs which are relying on different resources so for this also dfs is preferred but we can rely on both bfs or dfs i hope from all these examples you might have gotten some idea of which algorithm to choose for which kind of problems if you have any feedback or suggestion please leave them in the comment section below do like share and subscribe to my channel and until next time this is sandeep thapar signing off